Hello everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and today I am going to show you guys how to take the little sumptuous squares that we made back a couple of months ago and turn them into this adorable little post earring. And we're going to use some cubic right angle weave just like we did on the base units to um, enclose a little post blank inside of a one single cube. So the materials I'm going to be using are six 11-0 seed beads in the turquoise Picasso that we used on this project. I'm also going to be using four 8-0 tortoiseshell beads, which we used here. I've got one of the little True 2 millimeter olive gold fire polish beads. Um, of course, you'll need two earring posts. I've already made one, so I just have one laying here. And then also you're going to need four four millimeter fire uh, bicone beads, and these are Preciosa Smoky Topaz. We've also been working on this uh, the little puffy turqu the turquoise Picasso puffy bracelet. And the tutorial for the beaded charm is not going to be done in a video. However, it is going to be a post on the website. So I will throw a link to that up for um, into the bracelet tutorials. Once we finish this, in the next little video, I'm going to come back through on this bracelet and I'm going to embellish the center of my puffy squares using also the same true to two millimeter um, fire polish in the olive gold rainbow just so everything kind of matches and goes along together all right so let me get my desk organized and we'll get started on creating the post for our sumptuous square so it's very very simple what we're going to do we are going to pick up our four eightos Carry them down. Leave just enough tail to tie um, your overhand knots. I'm going to pass through those beads again to form a loop. And once I get my loop formed, I'm going to go ahead and tie this uh, tail thread off by doing two overhand knots. I am going to take my needle and move into the first bead again, pass through it, pull it pretty snug, and then I'm going to go ahead and end the tail thread. Just because when I was working on the first one, it was really annoying having that tail thread in the way. So now we're ready to form the first wall of our cube. To do that, we need to pick up two 11 O's, a back cone and two 11 O's. We're going to pass back through the same bead we're exiting from the opposite side. Just like that. We're going to move into the next 8 O on the base. We're going to pick up two 11 O's and a bicone. We are exiting from this 8 -0. We're going to come down through the two 11 O's on the left side of our 8 -0 bead. Then we're going to come back through that same 8 -0. So now we have two of our little walls of our cube in place and we need to move into the next 8 -0 on the base. So now let's go ahead and talk about direction. I'm going to take my little post and I'm going to put this through the center of my 8 beads like so. And I wanted to make sure that my bicon beads are going to come up over the top of that post. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little square. And I want to make sure that my directionality is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the two 11 beads here 
on the tip of this little uh, diamond shape. And I'm going to pull. And if it falls out of your hand, don't try not to get stressed. And what I need to do is pick up my two 11 O's. Or I'm sorry, my smoky topaz bead. And then I'm going to sew it down just like I did before. I'm going to come down these two 11 O's. I can get my needle in there. I'm going to come down those two 11 O's and then back through that same 8 O right here on the base at the same time. And then I'm going to pull. And so now I've got three of my topaz beads in place. Now I've removed the post so you can see where I'm actually exiting. You can see that I'm exiting from that 8 O right there. What I'm going to do next is come up through, or at first I have to go through my next 8 and come up through the two 11 -o. So we're going through this 8 and up through those two 11 -os. And we're going to pull everything into position. So now we just have our last little fire polish to put, or excuse me, our back on bead to put in place. We're going to pick up that bicone. We are coming out of these two 11 O's here. We're going to go back through the two 11 O's on our sumptuous square. And before I pull it really tight, I need to get my post into position. And now you can see that I have encased my little post earring inside of this little cube. And I am exiting these two C beads right here on the base. So what we need to do, let me pick up my needle here, is so over through the 8 at the bottom, right here, to follow our thread path. So come through the 8 Come up through the two next two 11 O's. And I have pictures, step-by-step uh, -step pictures of this in a corresponding blog post on the LearningBeeBoutique.com. So now that we're coming up through those two 11 O's, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply reinforce this top uh, circle of my bicones by sewing through all of the beads two times. And then I'm going to sew back down and sew through all of the bead, the four eight O's on the bottom a couple of times also. And this is going to secure the work and keep our little post earring in place. I have a tough time getting in this bicone. You want to make sure that you go through them at least a couple of times. And that shapes it all up and secures the uh, the post and also secures our little ornamentation here on the top. So I've got a couple more passes to do. And then I'll show you how to sew down and we'll secure the bottom. It's very cloudy and overcast here today. It always makes it difficult for me to see in my beading area. All right, so I've been through those several times. Now I'm going to sew down the two 11 O's where my working thread is exiting. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here with my four little 8 O's in that little right angle weave unit. I'm just going to go around and make sure that this is nice and secure. And that also keeps the post, you know, the post component from moving around and wiggling on the ear. So we'll just take our time. Make sure you don't get your thread hung up on your earring post. And after you've gone around a couple of times and you feel like everything is nice and secure, we are going to go around until we reach this ADO here at the top of our little cube. 
to add one, our little fire polish embellishment up there. So here I am coming around to this Edo right here, at the top of my little post. Now I'm going to sew up through the two 11 O's right beside it. And this is where you need to make sure your thread doesn't get hung up on your earring post. Now to add this little two millimeter fire polish in the center here, I could sew into one of my bicones and then sew from this bicone to this bicone, but it's gonna create some visible thread. So in order to remedy that situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come under the thread bridge right there between those two bicone crystals. I'm gonna pass my needle right under it. And then I'm gonna pick up this little two millimeter. I am going to come down to these two crystals right here, right and left, and I am gonna sew under that thread bridge between those two crystals. And you can see that that places my little fire polish dead in the center without having a bunch of visible thread. So now that I've went under that thread bridge, I can come right back over through the top of uh, through the top of that thread to this through my little crystal back towards the top. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go under the thread bridge at the top pointing outwards away from myself like this. And if once you feel like that's secure, you can actually come back through and make another pass if you need to. Um, I see my little tail thread. I didn't get it quite cut off right there. I'm going to have to burn that one. All right. So once you've got that accomplished, it's time to end our thread. And to end my thread, I'll, all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to come back down through the two 11 O's closest to where my working thread is exiting. And then I'm going to sew over into one of my eight O's. Doesn't matter which direction you go in, just whichever is easiest for you. And then I'm just going to tie some half inch knots in between these eight O's on the back side of the earring. So just pass your needle under the thread bridges between the two beads you're closest to. And pull a small loop, take your needle, come back through the loop, and pull your knot down. Just make sure that you don't get your thread hung up on your little earring post. So it's probably easier to work um, on the beads on the two sides instead of the ones at the top and the bottom of the post, like right here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get out of frame. So come under the thread between the two eight-o's. Take your time. Pull a small loop. Take your needle, go back through that loop, and then pull the knot down between them, just like that. And then before you cut your thread, make sure you move away from your last knot. I just think that's really precious. I like the way it came out. So here we have it, these cute little post earrings made with the sumptuous squares. You put your little clutch on the back. And that's an adorable little uh, earring set to match the bracelet that we're working on. And the final piece of the um, Picasso series is going to be, of course, a turquoise Picasso version of this pendant. All right, guys, so that is it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed making these cute little post earrings and that you find a way to use this idea in some of your own designs. Um, thanks for watching. Head on over to the Alluring Bee Boutique. Sign up for my newsletter. Check out all the different posts over there. And have a great day. Happy beading.